Hello again. <clears throat> well, this one is a little bit again on uh, sort of Catholics rising. Um, got an email from a guy called Simon who's uh, 28 and he's doing well. He's focusing on the things that matter. He's you know sorting himself out um, <clears throat> both with work and practical stuff. And um, he's apparently received quite a bit of um, let's say positive inspiration or influence from some of these videos. And uh, he asked a couple of questions and it's actually a couple of questions that have been common to some other emails I've been getting and so on. So I just want to touch briefly on a couple of things. If you are somebody who recognizes patterns, which I am, that's probably my best skill, then you might have noticed a few things, which taken individually, again, if you know, if you're a normal IQ person, this is just going to sound like crazy theory, right? But when you can sort of see a bigger picture and connect dots that other people don't even know are there, it becomes pretty easy to check. So I've noticed a couple of things. Anne Barnhart, who is a staunch Catholic, but is completely wrong about Ratzinger being a Pope, um, has moved closer and closer to the say deprivationist position, which, you know, rejects everything connected and linked to anything to do with Vatican II. The guy that does her podcast, uh, Super Nerd, is already thinking that the Novus Orco Mass is invalid, which it is. It's absolutely invalid. And, uh, you know, they argued about it in one of their podcasts. And he's shifting as well more to the correct Catholicism. Vox Day, by the way, I haven't spoken to him in a little while. Um, I know I think he's in, in Spain now with uh, with Big Bear. So um, they're, you know, probably busy cooking up some next attack on the, uh, on the social justice warriors and globalists. So good luck to them. But I've noticed that Vox, um, and, you know, he, he would probably rage against this. He might tell you, you know, just like when I let out of the bag the fact that you know, he likes long hugs, you know, and he got really upset and he said that the Kurgan lies, you know, I just don't know. And he would probably say something similar here, but I've seen him shift closer to the Catholic position, the hardcore Catholic position, than, um, than he has in, well, pretty much all the time I've been reading him since I started reading him. And uh, I'm sure he would vehemently deny this because he hates any kind of denominational sort of thing. Although he has said before that, you know, he's got great respect for the history of the Catholic Church and uh, so on. And, you know, he's read um, Aquinas, he's read Augustine, he's, he's quite familiar with a lot of um, ancient um, Catholic doctors of the Church. So... It's interesting when you look at the fact that I get emails from or comments from, uh, you know, one of the commenters, I think, was saying, you know, his mother has been going to playing the organ in the Lutheran church for 35 years and it's dwindling, it's dying. Well, guess what's not dying and what continues to grow? The hardcore original Catholics that reject the Vatican too. And those congregations are filled with men and women producing kids. I mean, there's a lot of kids in our little Catholic communities. So, you know, and the wives, the women are women. It's, uh, it's a great pay place to, you know, I don't know that a lot of the women are single because they're really pretty and feminine and want to be women and want to have children. So they get snapped up just like a man who are men get snapped up. You know, I've never been short of women in my life. Even when I was a complete uh, agnostic or even Zen agnostic slash atheist, whatever I was. And uh, that's because even though I wasn't Christian, I still had a very clear idea of, you know, what it is to be a man and never apologized for it to anybody and I never will. Um, so it's interesting to notice that Catholicism is on the rise. And remember what I said in the last video, which is try and get a little Catholic community together. I know that the Latin Mass is hard to get to. I know that you might have to drive a couple of hours to get there and take a day off work or whatever. 
just do it. Even if you just do it once a month, even if you only do it once every six months, just remember that the, the guys who went all the way to Jerusalem by foot, kicked ass, and then held on to those lands for a couple of centuries, those guys sometimes only had one mass a year because they were traveling, they were fighting wars and so on. And, you know, th there are spectacular events of um, examples of where uh, a mass was said just before a combat that should have resulted in the extermination of the Christians, and instead it went the other way. And just the other day, a guy on, on, uh, on the Facebook group, I mean, <laughs> he made a, a silly comment where, you know, they were discussing who's worse, you know, the, the grabbler, uh, the Hollywood grabblers that are perverting, you know, society throughout the globe, or the Chinese who are just outnumber everybody and are just going to take over. It was particularly, uh, you know, towards America, as in what's worse, the small hatted grabblers in America, or the coming yellow ocean of, you know, bug people. And this guy made a comment saying, oh, well, numbers are the single most important factor in a war. <laughs> it's like, what a moron. No, do it. read a book now and then, you know, I'll, I'll learn some history. Just numbers has never been the um, most important point. You know, if it were, history is replete with uh, examples where a small force of men that were dedicated change the course of history, starting, you know, with, all the way back to Leonidas, uh, the Knights of Malta, you know, the the, the, the fight of Le, at uh, Lepanto, you know, the, there are literally, in almost every conflict, and, you know, when it looks to China, for all their numbers and all their people, I mean, my great-grandfather was in the Boxer War, you know, the Chinese got their ass kicked by everybody. They got their ass kicked by the Japanese, they got their ass kicked by the British, they got their ass kicked by the French. I mean, they got their ass kicked by the French. You know, and I'm not talking about the Normans and the Franks of 1095. I'm talking about the French, really. It's, just remember, if I haven't got your nation yet, I will. And then uh, you can choose to be offended then. But, you know, it, it's like really... And again, look at Christianity. You know, like Vox says, Christianity started with 11 scared men. And when I told that to my priest, my battle priest, you know what he said? He said, well, actually, the people who really sort of started uh, Christianity was like one scared man and three or four scared women. You know, it was a scared man and, and, and four women. You know, because when Jesus came back from the dead, when he rose from the dead, you know, the first people that actually saw him was a woman, you know. And remember that back in those days, the testimony of a woman was less, was worth something like half of that of a man or something like that. So he really went to the weakest and the, the least sort of um, powerful people to announce him. And God does work that way. You know, that's why it's good to be Catholic, because Catholic Church, just like my old dojo, takes anybody. They don't bother to ask you, are you a mugger, are you evil, are you a sinner? You confess, you confess all your sin. You know, before you get baptized, you do a general confession. And, you know, it's impossible for you to confess every single sin. If, like me, you get baptized at age 48 or whatever it was. Was it 48? Uh, well, yeah, 47, 40, 47, something like that. Um, yeah, 47. For 47 years, you lived as I live, and then you get baptized. A general confession would take 47 years, pretty much. So, you know, it's just a general repentance of all the wrong you've done in your life with the uh, highlights, you know, <laughs> that you mentioned to the priest, perhaps. And then that's it. You get washed clean and you start new. So that's uh, pretty much uh, you know, how Catholics do it, and it the, was the same thing in our dojo. We didn't care, you know, if you were an evil mass murderer or whatever. You just come to our dojo, doesn't matter who you are. If you stay there, you will become a better person. There's, there's no two ways about it. There wasn't a single person that walked through those dojo doors and went through what we put them through, and after a year, wasn't already a better person, a much better person. And after a few years, they were really a lot better person. And I personally saw it, you know, with loads of people. So, 
It's the same with Catholicism. You know, once you get through those doors, and again, just like the dojo, it's pretty hardcore. And the rules are clear, simple, black and white. You know, we had our rules written up on the dojo thing, and then there was the other rules that you knew because you were told. Same, same like the church. You've got a big book of canon law. You've got the Catechism of Trent, if you like, one of them. You've got any catechism before 1958, really. Uh, it's probably okay. And uh, that's it. Follow the rules. And they're hard. They're hardcore rules, you know. And there's a lot of them, sure. But it's really not that hard to follow all of them to the best of your ability. And you will fuck up. You will get things wrong. You will make mistakes. You will forget. Uh, you will maybe, I don't know, fly into a rage, get drunk, whatever, do stupid shit because you're human. But again, the church acknowledges that we're human beings and we're failing, and we fail all the time, you know. And like what I tell you in the book Believe, bet you're in your own time, you know. If you're, if you're one of these guys that's like, oh, mea culpa, mea culpa, you know, whipping yourself, do that on your own time because your guilt and all that shit, I don't care, you know. Be effective. Do stuff. Help the poor. Visit the people in prison. I tried. I volunteered to visit people in prison. They they told me that the only place that I could go and visit in prison was a woman's prison. And then uh, there's a waiting list and it takes years. And I, I said, okay, well, put me on the waiting list. And uh, it's been years I haven't heard back. So they make it really difficult. You can't just walk in and go and visit people, apparently, which I think is very wrong. I mean, I understand some of the security and safety stuff, but you know, it doesn't take you that doesn't take that long to vet somebody, and especially if they're just there to talk religion, you know, and to to be supportive of people who are in jail. So um, there's that, and do the things that you're supposed to do. Look after your family, feed your family, make sure that you provide for them. Those are the Catholic things. Get into a little Catholic community. Talk to people about it. You know, let people know that oh, you're thinking of becoming Catholic, or you have become Catholic, or you are Catholic. You know, spread it around. Like, don't don't get afraid. And listen, I'm going to let you into another little secret that just because of you know who I am and like I know a lot of people and whatever. Do you know how many people I know that are secret Catholics? I mean, it's literally you know like I sometimes. You, through the symbol of the fish, you know, like, like like the ancient Christians used to do in Rome, to like recognize each other as like Christians because they'd get burnt at the stake, they'd get like thrown to lions and shit. There's so many Protestants that are like, I'm secretly a Catholic, but you know, and maybe they're, they're married to a, to a Protestant wife or, you know, or a Protestant husband, or they've got Protestant kids or their whole family's Protestant and they like don't know how to say it. And so they quietly just, you know, and what's starting to happen is some of these Protestants are starting to talk to each other and they're sort of like saying, oh, well, you know, I, I don't I don't really think that, you know, maybe like some some stupid thing, like, I, I, I don't really think I believe in once saved, always saved. What do you think? And the other person's like, yeah, I don't believe it either. Yeah, I don't think our preacher believes it either. He never talks about it. You know, it's starting to like, the truth is starting to bubble up to the surface, which makes perfect sense, by the way. Because I'm not one of these people that worries about when the end of days is uh, or when revelation is. Um, the apocalypse, the apocalypse is revelation. It's the same thing. I don't worry about the end times. They'll come when they come. Not even Jesus knows the hour. And we're told, be ready. <laughs> you know, because. <laughs> It'll happen when you're sleeping, when you're off guard, when you're like tired, when you're like, oh, no, I'm not going to worry about that now. But, you know, I'm kind of used to being ready because, and I worked as a bodyguard. I've had a sort of strange life, uh, naturally paranoid through my DNA of, you know, centuries of being fighters and warriors and mercenaries. So I'm kind of always expecting to be ready. You know, like today in the tube, there was some odd person. It was actually a girl. It was an odd young girl, a teenager or something, it was just out of the corner of my eye, I saw that she was like really looking at me, like quite intensely. And I wasn't doing shit, you know, I was like killing time on like playing a little game on my phone or something, you know, or reading, I can't even remember what I was doing, but I just felt it, I picked it up and I like, 
if she was really kind of looking, you know, and I, I kind of look, looked out of the corner of my eye a couple of times, and and my instinct was like, be careful, you know. I mean, this is a probably a fifteen year old girl, right? But that's not the point. A fifteen year old girl with a razor blade can kill you. And that doesn't mean I wasn't sitting there in fear, but I just like my body naturally went into like, okay. You know, if she does move that way, like to stab me or something or whatever, I'm ready. I didn't change my posture, didn't do anything, but it's just like I'm aware of her now, so whatever, she can try whatever, she isn't going to get very far. And, you know, maybe it wasn't that, you know, because I'm always, you know, I trust my, my feelings because they've, they've uh, saved me, they literally have saved my life, my, my sensations and so on several times, so I trust my gut instinct. But who knows, maybe she was just staring at the old bold guy, or maybe she's a weird girl that has got daddy issues and, you know, thought I was really handsome. Just look at the positive, you know, I don't know. I don't know what she was really doing. Maybe she was just zoning out and I was the focus of it. But it's kind of like how end times will be, you know. But the thing is, we're told that before the end times, everybody's going to get a chance to, like, wake up or fucking stay lost and fallen, you know? And there is a definite movement towards true Catholicism, which is confusing for a lot of people because a lot of nominal Catholics are is still stuck in the Novus Orcus, you know, thing. So spread the word. You know, it's so new to spread the word. Uh, remember, we are the church militant. We are here to save souls. That is your job. You've got one job. Save souls starting with yours and then everybody else's so make them aware of the fact that you know what catholicism really is educate yourself and educate others now, the catholic church is not what you've been taught it's not what people think bergoglio and all that be the first to say i'm catholic of course i have nothing to do with the novus orkians that you know bergoglio and his, his Satanists that infest the Vatican. Of course, those guys are, you know, they're scum of the earth. They're true Satanists. Um, I'm actually a Catholic, you know. They're, they're just the impostors that have taken over our buildings and so on. They're Novus Orkins. They're not Catholics. It, it engages people. You know, it's like, well, well, Novus Orca, what is that? You know, the new orcs, you know. Novus Order, Novus Orca, oh, Novus Order, what is that? The new order of the mass, you know, they changed the mass. Did you know the Catholic mass was the same all over the world? In Latin, done the same by every priest on the planet. So it doesn't matter where you are, it was all the same. And you'd go to a mass and you'd know those are Catholics. And you know those people are Catholics, so you'd treat them better, they'd treat you better. It was the brotherhood of man, really. And then the Novus Orcs came in, the new orcs came in, and they make it a new orc mass, you know, which now you've got rainbow flags on the altar and so on. You know, those guys are not Catholics. They're, they're, they're infiltrators. They've attacked the one true church. And of course, why? Because it is the one true church. The Catholic church has been attacked constantly, without end, from the beginning, more than any other denomination. Why do you think that is? People don't shoot at you if you are completely useless. They don't shoot at you if you're not a threat. In war, you don't bomb targets and people that are absolutely no threat whatsoever and have no value bombing even just as a, as a morale boost to your troops. You don't waste the fucking bombs. If you're taking fire, it's because you're effective. If you're taking fire, it's because you're dangerous. Well, guess what? Catholic Church has been taking fire since the get-go. You think that's a coincidence? It's not a coincidence. So, this is my message for uh, today. Keep your eyes peeled. Look around. Notice that where there is truth, there is a leaning towards true Catholicism. And where true Catholicism is, there is a definite leaning towards the truth, justice, beauty, and so on. Beauty is very important. I didn't appreciate that until quite a lot later in life. Um, I've always appreciated it in women because I like women, but um, I didn't appreciate it in many other aspects. But beauty is a sanctifying grace from God. And uh, the Catholic Church has always recognized beauty as a virtue. And you'll see that if you go to Catholic Latin Mass and look at the women with their veils and dressed up. So they're all covered up. 
and they've probably got two or three kids on their hands and they look more womanly feminine and attractive than most women you know on average that, that you find anywhere else so if you're a young man go west boy go west and uh, get catholic that's it good night